Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video for the release of Vault 2023. My name is Jason Kelly, an application specialist here at Symmetry, and I'm going to be running through all of the new features and system requirements of the new Vault products. This release sees a variety of features added across the platforms, including new UI themes, instance property support, column customization, AutoCAD Vault add-in enhancements, and the highly awaited markup support. But first, let's take a quick look at the system requirements. From the server side, Vault now allows for support for a server on Windows 11 for Vault Basic. The database servers also now require later service packs. All of the other requirements are remaining the same as the 2022 release. From the client side, again support has been added for Windows 11, however Internet Explorer 11 is now no longer supported for both the client and thin client. Moving into the client, we will first take a look at the settings and options that have changed this release. Firstly, you now have the option to change the UI theme to either dark or light, or set it as default. This new feature can be found under Tools and Options. This is following suit from Inventor's switch to having a changeable theme. We would recommend changing this to a dark theme if you are using and looking at the software regularly. Another couple of options have been made available when viewing and previewing files. Firstly, in 2023 you are now able to choose that you wish to always open using Inventor read-only mode. This is for use when you wish to always open using the read-only mode regardless of whether the DWF is available. This is a handy feature for users only wanting to preview the files. The second viewing option was made available in the 2022.1 release, as you are now able to preview files using the Autodesk Viewer. I will come on to this in more detail later on in the video when we take a look through the markup functionality that it uses. Moving into the Vault settings, and previously you had the option to disable the check-in of design files. This is an administrative tool to stop users adding design files directly from the Vault Explorer, as this will lose any relationship that it has. It will also stop the publishing of any visualisation files. The recommended method is to check it in from the appropriate Vault add-in directly from the software. In previous releases, this was just a global setting for all design files, so they sat under one umbrella. However, in 2023 you can now customise which file types you wish to disable and which file types you want to allow check-in from the Vault Explorer. This includes adding in custom file types you may be importing into Vault. This is going to be very useful for people uploading, for an example, AutoCAD 2D files on batch that have no links or relationships. Vault now supports instance properties which were introduced into Inventor at the 2022 release. Instance properties work differently to standard I properties as they are specific to the instance of a component in the selected file. They are also stored in the parent assembly file rather than part specific. They allow you to create different properties for the same part file and utilise them later down the line. This new functionality is now supported in 2023, but works only with items in the bill of materials. The mapping configuration will therefore need to be set up using the item category and mapping it through from a file which already has the instance property assigned. You can then view the property by generating the item and going to the Bill of Materials tab and customising the view. This also works when exporting the bomb. You can choose to include the instance property on export. This is going to be extremely useful if you are looking to differentiate components and are currently using items in Vault. Taking a look into the Vault add-in for the CAD programs, an extra features have been made available for the AutoCAD Vault add-in. The first feature is the Show Details panel is now available directly from the add-in. This will enable you to view the appropriate Vault properties including history and where the component is used or any related files to it. This feature is available on the right click menu and will load up in a dockable panel within AutoCAD. You can then switch between drawings, if it is checked into Vault it will update this panel. 
The second feature made available is the GoTo Vault folder. This will load up the Vault client and take you directly to the file. Both of these functions are a quick shortcut, but they're going to save users a lot of time flicking between the client and the AutoCAD. In the client, the customised view option for choosing property columns is now available in a number of new areas. This is now available in Change State, Change Revision, Change Category, Pack and Go, Synchronise Properties and Undo Checkout. A good example of where this may come in useful is you could add the Approver property or Property Compliance when changing state or you could add the author of the file when changing the revision or category. This is going to allow you to configure the Vault client specifically to each individual user's needs. When working with large amounts of data, finding components and working out what lifecycle state they're in can be quite challenging. Now, there is an option to add in a new property called State Glyph in the Customize View area. This is a new visibility tool that is assigned to each lifecycle state. In the setup of life cycles, you can assign a colour, like you would with categories, to each state, and this can then be pulled through to your customised view. This is going to make changing life cycle states a lot quicker by improving the visibility of each state. As mentioned earlier, the way you can preview files has changed, and you can now use the online Autodesk viewer, which is now built directly into Vault. This viewer comes with a number of extra features, including the ability to explode a model, a more advanced measure tool, and taking section views. One of the most sought after features in Vault has been a built-in markup tool. With this new viewer, you now have, in 2023, a markup functionality that lets you publish markups directly to Vault and view them in a built-in menu. This menu will pull through the information on who created the markup and when they created it. This allows for history to be kept. Each markup will also require a name, so you can search through the available markups in each version. So let's have a look at it in further detail. First of all, you can use the viewer either under the view tab or by opening it up in a new window. You can find the markup tool on the left hand side of the middle panel. Just a point, prior to selecting this you will need to use the view functions to position the model or drawing to the view you wish to annotate on. It will then load up the markup browsing panel. This will give you a full history of all the markups created at this version. Markups are version specific. You will not be able to search through the markups for all versions here only the markups created in that specific version. It will keep the markups for historic versions so you can toggle between them and view old markups if required. You are only able to view old markups though. You aren't able to rename, edit or delete them for historical versions. There is also a search bar at the top of the panel to help narrow down if there are a high number created. You can view these by selecting on them and it will change the view accordingly. As you hover over each markup there are options to delete or to rename them. To add a new one you can either start using the tools on a blank view or if you are already in the markup tool use the create new option up the top making sure you have the model orientated correctly. At the bottom you have a list of tools available. These are basic tools including freehand sketch, a variety of shapes including arrows and clouds, and a number of different text options. You can also change the line and fill styles such as colour and line weight. Once an object has been placed, you can then move it around and edit it by selecting on that shape or text, and then you can also delete it. Just a quick point, there are undo and redo arrows at the top of the browser. Once you are happy with the markup, you will then need to save it. You have two options on save, either to save it as data, which will save it to the markup browsing panel 
and store it directly to Vault. Or, if you're wanting to send this to a non-CAD user, you can save it down locally as an image file and send it to them separately. Please note that this will not be stored in Vault. Once you're happy, to come out of the markup panel, just hit Done in the ribbon up the top. This markup functionality is also available in the ECO environment, including the ability to save the markup as data and have it saved to the Vault. Some of the main features also work with the Thin Client. Within the Thin Client, you are only able to view markups and also generate them and save them as image files. This will be for the non-CAD users. However, you aren't able to store them to the Vault and edit or delete any markups created. This new tool is going to be very useful for companies looking to create an approval workflow directly within Vault. It will keep consistency and make everything easier using only one tool for the lifecycle and markup process. The final new area in Vault 2023 is the Vault Gateway. This affects how you are logging into Vault when working remotely. This new software will provide secure remote access to the Vault data behind the firewall without the use of VPN. It also doesn't require any open inbound network ports or connection to an on-site network. Once this is configured, you will need to put the URL of the gateway into the server when logging in. This is going to be beneficial for users now remote working and working with any third parties. This will allow administrators to create normal Vault or Autodesk accounts for these users but who will get full access to the Vault. Also, the Vault Gateway will allow connection from previous versions of Vault clients to three versions back. This is starting from the 2022.1 release and onwards. The Vault Gateway is configured through the ADMS console and has a number of requirements. Vault 2022.1 and onwards, fully migrated Knowledge Vault Master database, an Autodesk account, which has to be an Autodesk account team administrator and the Vault server's default website needs to allow requests through port 80. If you are interested in hearing more about Vault Gateway and would like help configuring this or are interested in any other new areas within Vault 2023 then please get in contact with us here at Symmetry. Thank you for watching.